So, today on 14 Victor Echo, things that, I guess, blow, suck, do what? I don't know. The Pino Tube. So, this is the Garmin uh, Fancy Pino Tube. It's the um, GAP26. Uh, we're going non regulated on the heat. Um, what but does that mean? So the regulated, there's a box that uh, controls the heater and will cycle the heat on and off to maintain a certain temperature. Okay. Whereas non-regulated, you just turn the heat on, it just heats up. So with regulated, if you're on the ground and you turn it on, um, so if you turn any pitot tube on any uh, general aviation airplane, if you turn the heat on while it's on the ground, and there's not a lot of airflow going over it, it's likely to overheat. Okay. Uh, while you're flying, it's likely to be um, uh, at the optimal temperature. Okay. So the regulated just adds a little bit of circuitry and um, connections and extra stuff that I feel is a neat toy but not worth it. Okay, um, so we didn't get it. So we didn't get it. Uh, because to be honest, I have turned a pedo heat on in my flying 30 year flying career. Like, I don't think I've ever actually had to do it. Uh, there's one time that we did collect ice, um, with, uh, uh, my friend Josh Flowers, uh, who does aviation 101. He and I were up flying one day and we collected ice in a VMC day, which was really interesting. So we, yeah, of course we turned pedo heat on then. I think that was really the only time that I... Um, Didn't we turn pedo heat on when we were flying back from Angel Fire? Uh, we probably did. So it, it's just rare that you actually need to have it turned on. So to mount the extra boxes and stuff, I, I just feel it's, um, okay. it's unnecessary. Okay. But the Vans plans do not cover how to install something fancy like this. Um, the other benefit of this, not only does this give us airspeed, but um, it will be our angle of attack sensor. So this will be our primary indication for stall. Uh, we are not installing the traditional uh, stall vane. Uh, we will just plug those holes up and uh, move on. And um, so this will be our primary indication for stall indicator, okay. uh, which means there's just a little bit more plumbing that you have to do. So okay. instead of a standard single tube that you hook up for a pitot static system. Now you have two tubes because um, I don't know the physics behind it. I think the physics are it's got a pitot static at two different angles and it can measure the difference between them and uh, determine your angle of attack. And then one of those angle of attack equals stall and then it flashes lights on the G3X and audio horns and does its thing. Okay. So, um, what do we have to install? Well, we got the two um, pneumatic tubes that drive the uh, airspeed and angle of attack, and we've got four wires that need to be plugged in, uh, power and ground. Uh, then we've got some goodies here. Mounting hardware? Yeah, so the problem is there's no place on the wing that this fits, so what do you do? Um, cut a giant hole in the skin. <laughs> cut a but where do we want to cut that hole? Um, my answer is I'm going to be one bay outboard of where the Aralon bell, bell crank is um, because I feel by being out one bay, uh, one will be right next to where the existing access panel is. So any work we need to do on this, we can have the access panel open, reach in through one of the lightning holes in the ribs and have reasonable access without too many four letter uh, curse words working on it. You do know the key to building an airplane is four-letter four curse words. We try to keep them off the channel, but during the build, yeah, you, yeah, they're there. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, sometimes it's just tough doing some of this stuff. So, um, but there's lots of different options when it comes to mountain. I know um, the Avidine pedo tube makes a nice bracket with a mast that kind of has a bend in it. Uh, I think we're going to go ultra simple. So this is the mounting bracket that uh, we're just going to put underneath the skin and we're going to cut the hole in the skin and we're going to do a doubler uh, underneath it. So it will be skin, doubler, bracket. So the skin will be down here and then the hole will get cut just like through that. 
so that we, let's see if I can put this on the right way. I've got a 50-50 chance doing this. Oh. Take that off, pop this on. Duh, duh, duh. I think that's backwards. So that is just a template to help you cut. Why can't you just use that? Um, I don't know. We might consider doing that because that actually might just be the perfect doubler. Although I do think I want the doubler to be a little bit wider than that, uh -huh. um, just to give it some more stability. So this just goes through. Hopefully you read the instructions. There are instructions that you download from uh, Garmin, Stein, and other people have them um, available. Okay. Um, but simply put, uh, the skin, so this bracket will be inside the wing, and this will be underneath, and um, yeah, sounds simple. All right, just get it going fast enough, I'll punch a hole through the skin, and uh, who cares, right? Um, now, there's uh, some people do use RTV to seal this up. Um, it is on the bottom, so I'm not worried about too much of uh, water leaking in. Um, but um, I don't know, if we fly upside down in the rain, maybe water could leak in. I don't think we'll ever be doing that. Um, so these tubes can be cut. So after you get them in, um, you can cut them to be the right length that you need and you can bend them. Uh, you will have to bend them to uh, fit in the space. Do read the installation manual from Garmin about uh, cutting these. Um, there is a um, maximum amount you can cut. And the reason is if you cut them too short, the uh, heat from the pitot tube when it's used will travel up a little bit and you don't want to cause so much heat that your uh, plastic pneumatic tube and starts to melt. Yeah. So uh, it is called out in the, in the uh, installation manual for this. So do read it and follow it. Um, do read the installation manual in its entirety and follow it as well, not just for the, the cut in part. Um, it is designed to go on an access panel. We will not be putting it on an access panel. We will be just uh, cutting the hole in the skin. Uh, we've seen plenty of other builders do the same uh, with the doubler. Um, I think, you know, I mean, honestly, with just this bracket on the skin, it's probably enough, but <clears throat> putting a doubler in place um, will just add some more rigidity and um, uh, strength to it. Uh, we are not going to do any fancy bending of the doubler and trying to... I've seen people like also rivet the doubler into one of the ribs or the spar. To, yeah, we're just, we're just going to let it go. Uh, just like it was on an access panel. Um, um, and uh, I, in theory, it should go on pretty easy. And that's the last major thing we have to do on this wing before we start tidying up the wire harnesses and clean it up. I mean, at least the good news is if it falls out, we can just buy a new one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hopefully we put the screws in here so it doesn't <laughs> fall out. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, it's one of those things because there's not a wealth of videos and knowledge online of, uh, and I'm sure there is, I can dig deeper, but it's, um, so I'm, I am going to take as much detailed video as I can of us installing this and what we do. Uh, hopefully it's a, uh, what to do versus a not what to do, but we'll let you know. <laughs> um, cutting the hole to this shape is going to be, um, you know, slow and painstaking to get smooth and right. Um, uh, but to be honest, it's, Hard it is, is to say, it's okay if it's not perfect because the doubler and the bracket will cover that up pretty decently. Um, so we'll just use a small Dremel uh, cutoff wheel to do the rough cut and then uh, probably hand, do a lot of hand filing until it's right. So that'll be a couple hours that Melissa's not sitting in the garage with me as I just sit here and <laughs> um, she hates the sound of Middle, middle files. Yeah. Um, so then, yeah, we'll get that on and um, run the pneumatic tube in. Um, the quick build wing had um, 
uh, holes and bushings uh, put into place for everything except for, I think, two of the ribs. I'm going to have to add two more. So that's pretty easy. Just uh, drill and step drill, just like uh, you would have done building it. I know we've uh, put a lot of those in the fuselage. So um, that's just adding two more uh, lightning holes and uh, bushings um, for the pneumatic tube. Um, one tube will go through those holes that are already there, and then one tube I think I'm going to route uh, on top of the, the um, J stiffener uh, on the top skin uh, and find a way to, I guess, just zip tie it in place. Uh, power, we've worked with Stein to get the, the right power ran where we need, so all that's just uh, doing some crimping, crimping and hooking it up per the plans, and then we are ready to uh, dimple and close up this uh, bottom skin that's left. Um, My goal is to do that this weekend. All right. You actually set the rivets? Yeah. Okay. That well, because we need a long session to get all those rivets in because yep. we fight with each other half the time and we <laughs> rivet half the time. So it's not, we can't just get have like an hour because then we just spend the whole time fighting with each other. You're doing it wrong. You're holding it wrong. No, but if we have a longer period of time, then we can actually get through both of those things. It's it's easy to avoid those fights. Yes, dear. You're <laughs> you're right. I um, know, but quit riveting wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the riveting the bottom skin on seems intimidating, but I think once we get into the flow, it's just like any of the other big skins. It's just. Uh, one rivet at a time and wham, bam, and eventually you're done. Yeah. So, uh, but we do have quite a bit of work left to do before we're ready to um, start that process, but we'll get to it soon. So uh, onwards and hopefully upwards uh, by the end of 2025, uh, upwards. Being, we just started, chill out, buddy. I wanna fly this airplane. <laughs> this is, yeah, you know, we're not the career we always want to be building and never flying. Uh, we're building to fly. We've already been building longer than I thought we would. Yeah, well, a couple things came up in our way there. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> I see what you did there. We love Millie. <laughs> so, um, well, that's where we're at, and uh, we're going to keep on keeping on. So thank you for uh, joining 14 Victor Echo. See you next time.